Hi, I'm William Pesek. I'm East Asia correspondent for Asia Times based in Tokyo. It's Thursday morning, April 15th. Today, I'd like to discuss Chinese bonds with you. I know that stocks are everyone's favorite medium in China. People tend to focus on the bourses in Shanghai and Shenzhen, and for good reason. That's where all the energy is. However, in the last 10 days, something very big has happened in China's bond market. It has arrived, if you will. Uh, one of the most important bond indexes in the world, the FTSE Russell, has decided to include Chinese debt. This is a very big deal because this will essentially force large pension funds around the world, including the, some of the biggest here in Japan, to focus on Chinese bonds and pour significant money into Chinese bonds for the first time. This is a very important step for China's process of internationalizing the economy, of internationalizing its currency. And this is happening at a moment when the Chinese yuan is coming into its own. You know, the U.S. dollar has had 12 months of volatility. People are very worried about the extent to which the U.S. is borrowing. So the Chinese currency is having a moment just as the bond market is stepping on the center stage, if you will. However, this is kind of a good news, bad news story in that the question is, how ready is China for this prime time? How ready is China for Basically, investors from around the world to pour into the, its markets, are they up to speed? Are they international enough? And that's kind of the concern. For instance, the government uh, pension investment fund here in Japan, which is one of the biggest investors, is very, very reluctant to invest in Chinese bonds for a variety of reasons. Uh, there's concerns about transparencies. There's concerns about credit rating quality. There's concerns about liquidity. Uh, there's concerns about hedging tools. And there's also concerns that the Chinese government is not open enough, it's not transparent enough to run an international bond market the way you would see elsewhere. The, the, the press freedom in China is not where you'd like it to be. So in many ways, this is a test for China. It's a test that China arguably will pass um, when you think about how much work is being done behind the scenes to ready China for this prime time, if you will. The People's Bank of China, the central bank has been working on this since 2016. Uh, it has gotten the Chinese currency included in the IMF's uh, reserve currency uh, basket, if you will, which, which was also a very big deal in terms of yuan internationalization. So this bond market opening is the next obvious step in that direction. However, what it does do is it kind of puts the pressure on China to step up reforms. It forces President Xi Jinping to make good on his pledges. Uh, President Xi said in 2013 that he would let market forces play a decisive role in decision making in China. And now that you have all these investors from around the world, investors from New York, from London, from Singapore, from Berlin, from Frankfurt, and from Brussels investing in China, it's going to be in some ways harder for China's idiosyncrasies as an investment destination to live on. It's going to, China in many ways is going to be forced to become more like a traditional international market. And that's going to force China to change its ways. It's going to force China to allow the yuan to trade freely in markets at the moment. It's not fully convertible. It is going to force China to accept defaults in the market. And in many ways, what it's going to do is it's going to force China to take a deep breath and realize that economic reforms are important to carry out in order to make sure that the investors coming into China are happy with what they find. Well, again, this is a good news, bad news story, but it's mostly a good news story because China has been, again, working on this for years. You can argue that the government is very committed to opening and internationalizing the bond market. And as long as China keeps pace, with the investment demand, the money flowing into China with reforms, things will work out fine. I'm William Pesek, Asia Times, Tokyo. Thank you.